You'll have to take responsibility for what you've done to the first generation. Last chapter, the five kings cornered James to get revenge for what he did against Xiang Ji Yuk. Now, is James stressed? Is he panicking? No, he's actually chilling, but he's actually very logical about it. He's thinking about it in many different scenarios like, this is a perfect chance for me to test the skills of the regional kings. James also considers his injuries he received from fighting Xiang Ji Yuk, but he also notes that the five kings individually are not stronger than Xiang Ji. How accurate is this statement? I don't know, I'll let the power scalers decide that, but I like to believe it that Xiang Ji is the strongest king, of course with six fingers. Before James has any more time to think about escaping, Xiao Du comes with a headbutt. I'm not gonna slander Xiao Du in this chapter because, you know, I'm not trying to be a mean person, but this is all he does this chapter and James just dodges it easily, and Xiao Du doesn't get any more screen time this chapter, but it's okay because Taesu Ma is here, the fist of ants and the better version of Hudson Ann. James recognizes he has no power to fight the five kings, but all he has to do is deflect, dodge, and run away. Honestly, a pretty Pretty good strategy if you're getting jumped because you can't 1v5 people so if you do get jumped the best thing to do is run away. Guys take this advice. James also notes that Taesu is very strong. His block didn't necessarily deflect his punch so pretty good feats by Taesu Ma. Does anyone realize that James is sort of like Charles Troy? He thinks like him, he's very logical in most situations, and he's kind of like a strategist. As James is running away at max speed, he's confident that no one can match his speed and catch up to him. But who do we see right behind him on his tail? It's the speed and endurance genius, Gong Xiaobji. It was a pretty cold panel of Gong Xiaobji, also showing off his incredible speed to match James Lee. These kings are not letting James get away. They want revenge and they're not letting up. So James goes for a kick right at Gong Xiaob, but Gong Xiaob is able to endure it and block his kick. But then, James kicks off Gong Xiaob's body to propel him to go even faster. Guess who he runs into? It's Ji Cheng Kwok with the chops. He realizes that James is trying to run away because he has no more energy after his fight with Xiang Ji Yuk. So I mean this really isn't a fight but it's more so just catching the speedy guy and James knows he can't 1v5 these guys. If he does face them head on he doesn't stand a chance which I agree I do think 5 of them is a bit too much for anybody. But this is perfect. Ji Cheng planned this. The king of Incheon now has a chance to grab James. But this goofy ass MF is tying his shoes. Ji Cheng is pissed saying we can't let someone like him get away. That was our only chance. But King of Incheon isn't phased. He's actually pretty chill. He's like, don't worry, I got this. All I have to do is grab him, right? And he, just like that, catches up to James in one panel. Honestly, you can see the fear from James's face once he catches up. Means he wasn't expecting his speed, wasn't expecting him to be so close to grabbing him. And I think the cements in Xion is one of the high tier kings. For sure he's above Seok to maybe Taesu and Gong Xiaop. So pretty sick man. And James has to act quick. He maneuvers his body very fast to propel himself off the shoulder of the King of Incheon. And he basically goes flying all the way up to the rooftop. King of Incheon is very impressed by this and he's like oh you'd be a great addition to Incheon. So I mean what if Incheon's king wasn't off guard and he actually was able to catch James Lee there. It might have been GG for James but you know plot armor James has to live he's pretty young but this encounter made him really pissed off. Well, he wasn't pissed off. He was like, oh, it was really fun. He says, next time we meet, I'm going to hunt you guys individually. And we all know how that turns out. I don't really know how the thresholds are working. I know people have been talking about the masters and the thresholds recently. I'm not really into that. But James probably unlocked a new threshold after his fight with Xiang Ji Yuk. And I see the menace he's going to become after this night. Saying, oh, I'm going to hunt you guys all down. I will personally come and find you and end you. He may be a bit of a yapper, but you gotta admit, you have to like this dude. He's so strong and intimidating at the same time, even though he's only like 19. Ji Chang's like, yeah, lame, whatever. And James says, well, you now have a chance to go get Shim Young Chong, which is the shaman. He's all alone, defenseless. Finally, we'll get to see him, you know, maybe take some punishment in this chapter. Bro starts instantly crying. The five kings surround him and he starts thinking, oh, I guess it's time for me to go to heaven. Shaman talking about the heavens is ridiculous. You are going to the deepest pits of hell. There is no saving you, but maybe you are going to heaven because there is a god. The Chanlang village somehow knows about this thing and they surround the shaman's house saying, We will save you, Sir Shim Young Chan. You are our savior. The kings are absolutely shocked and it looks like Shim Young Chong is on good terms with God because this is absolutely crazy. He's saved once again, I guess. PTJ does not want to kill this guy. And it looks like PTJ is a big fan of Attack on Titan, Shingeki no Kyojin, because he always makes his characters run like this, run like a titan. They surround the kings and Gong Saib is like, 
Do you think this means we won't go easy on you? I'm gonna beat all your asses. Xiang Ji Yuk regains consciousness for a moment and he sees all the villagers around him. I guess this causes some kind of PTSD and he throws up on the spot. So the kings are all concerned because I guess they know about this disease that Xiang Ji has. King of Injian notes that Xiang Ji's disease is back and Gong Chop turns around and says, will he turn like that again? We should move first thing before anything. This place is not suitable for Xiang Ji Yuk. A few things to note down. Xiang Ji survived this encounter with all the zero generation guys, albeit with one extra finger. So I'm really wondering how he ends up dying because if the shaman's not the one to kill him, then maybe the illness he has is. Ji Cheng looks back and says, I guess that fake god really helped you out. Shim Yang Chan, and the shaman is still running away. He's scared as hell. The man runs all the way to the mountains. It seems like he's finally far away from everyone, and he celebrates being alive. Finally, I'm alive. I just have to start over. And suddenly, Vin Jin comes out of nowhere to sock him right in the face. I think Vin Jin probably got up and started following the shaman after he ran away. That explains why he caught up so quickly, because obviously the shaman is not as good shape as Vin Jin, and Vin Jin is absolutely pissed. He wants to exact his revenge right now. This is a man you do not want to mess with. Or I guess this is a middle school boy you don't want to mess with. Now that we're reaching the probably climax of the arc, it just feels like Vin Jin's character was kind of wasted. I'm not gonna lie, I have a rant to go on Vin Jin, but I feel like that can be saved in a totally different video about what went wrong with Chang Liang arc. I did enjoy this arc for sure, it's not over yet. Vin Jin just didn't have much screen time. You know, it was very much like Xiangji Yuk the whole time. We were just glazing Xiangji and Vin Jin kind of just got shafted every single time he was on screen. He didn't really resonate, but maybe this time of him beating Shaman's ass would kind of redeem him and it kind of did, kind of not really. I mean, it was nice to see the Shaman get beat up by Vin Jin, especially Vin Jin, and he just continues to beat his ass. And I felt like this sequence went on for way too long. Vin's so violent, it ended up being really, really gruesome. I mean, he just didn't stop, dude. He thinks back in his mother's death, and he starts choking out the shaman, and he wants to kill him so bad, but he refrains for a second, and remembers that he shouldn't be murdering people at 16 years old. Vin walks away, nearly killing the shaman, and he sees his headband, or his mom's headband, or I guess his dad's headband, and he goes to pick it up. This shaman is so pissed, he grabs a rock, ready to smash down on Vin Jin, but Vin Jin grabs the headband, and I guess the shaman was standing on the headband, and when he grabs it up, the shaman trips over the headband, and he falls to his demise. This background music choice right now does not fit the vibe at all. I'm sorry, but I couldn't find any other music choice. The shaman falls off the cliff with the rock above him, ready to smash down on him, and Vin Jin finally realizes his mistake. He tries to grab the shaman, but it's too late. The shaman lay on the ground, motionless, completely dead. This is pretty much confirmed. And we see this gruesome image of the rock smashed on his head. I'm gonna blur this, okay guys? Cause it is pretty gruesome in lookism standards. Like we see an on-screen death, it's kind of crazy. Vin Jin feels horrible. And why is Taejin here? Taejin witnesses the whole thing. I don't know if he witnessed Vin Jin beating his dad's ass. I guess this is why Taejin hates Vin Jin. I mean, he never mentioned anything about his dad before, but I guess he witnessed Taejin kind of kill his dad. Of course, it was a mistake, but it's still manslaughter, right? And the final panel, Taejin looking at his dead dad. He's like, Dad? And he sees Vin Jin kill him. Does this mean Vin Jin killed the king of Chun Liang? Was the shaman the king of Chun Liang, I guess, at the time? Also, just looking at context clues, it looks like Taejin and Vin Jin are probably half brothers, with Mu Jin both being their dad. The shaman hates Mu Jin so much because he took the women in his life Taejin's mom and Vin Jin's mom. So I guess that's why he raised Taejin and his own son. I don't know. But anyway, crazy chapter. A lot of things happened, of course we didn't see James Lee fight, but we kind of saw a glimpse of it, so I'm glad he PTJ at least showed something, right? Yeah, if you did enjoy it, hit that like subscribe button, and I will see you in the next review. Peace.